What is going on, beautiful people? Welcome to another episode of Mornings with Lee Hammock, your favorite self-aware narcissist. Today, we're talking about should you tell your story about what you dealt with, what you went through with your narcissist or toxic person, or should you just keep it to yourself? Like, what, what should you do? Lee, tell us what should we do? Like, I want to share my story, but I don't know if I should. I want to tell people what's going on, what I've been through and whatnot. Before we hop deep into today's episode, y'all, make sure to check out the book. Y'all know it. Remember, it's not your fault. My kid's book is available on Amazon. It's a conversation starter about, you know, to talk to your kids about toxic relationship dynamics, telling the truth, setting boundaries and things of that nature. It's available on Amazon. Check it out. <clears throat> but yeah, yeah, that's a question I got. So y'all know I do these um, morning talks and I love like doing the morning. Like I'd have morning Zoom calls as well for almost every morning. And the Zoom call I had this morning, she was just like, she was saying like, I want to tell my story, but I don't know if I should. Or should I? Should I? Or should I not? I'm like, it's up to you. It really depends on what you want to do. I know it just sounds like um, a cop out, a cop out, but some people don't tell their story because they, they don't feel safe to do it. You know, so if you decide to tell your story, make sure that you are going to be safe because some narcissistic people, or well, a lot of narcissists are super worried about their reputations, right? They're super concerned about how they will be viewed and how they look to other people. So they don't want their reputations to take a hit, right? So in order to not take a hit, they do a lot of different things, right? So they try to protect their reputations at all costs. So if you were to share your story and embarrass them or out them, they might lose their minds. You see, they might lose their cool or try to hurt you or harm you or something like that. They might come back. It might come back to try to bite you in the in the end. Right. This is what happens. This is the mindset um, of narcissistic people. Like, so you can tell, like I said, tell your story. Don't be afraid of telling your story. Of course, do not be afraid to tell your story, but be as safe as possible. Right. You don't have to heal in silence. You absolutely do not. You do not have to heal in silence. It is not a, like it's not a prerequisite to, he to heal. Healing in silence is not a prerequisite to healing. You can heal out loud. Like you've been silent enough. So if you want to tell your story, tell your story. I'm not telling you this. You have to share it on Instagram or Facebook or something like that. You don't have to try to go viral with your story. You can write it down. Like sharing your story doesn't entail telling the world. It can be sharing your story. can mean telling your friends and family what you've been through. Telling your story could mean just writing it down in your journal. Telling your story could just get it means getting it out of your system and not be remaining silent, you know. You have the right to remain silent, right? That's the Miranda rights. You have the right to remain silent, but you don't have to remain silent. Even when the police are telling you that, you don't have to remain silent. They just say, hey, look, you can you don't have to talk to us. But what you say can and will be used against you. So you don't have you look, you don't have to, you don't have to do anything. <laughs> you know, so you don't have to heal in silence, y'all. It's oh, uh, it's like they it benefits the narcissist for you to be silent, right? It benefits them. To the benefit their reputation, their lifestyle, their you know the new supply, their relationship with the new supply, it benefits them a lot for you to remain silent. So your silence does benefit them. But again, don't just like oh, don't just share your story to try to get back at them and try to if they have a new relationship. That's what I'm just saying. Like some people are just like, well, I, I want to ruin their new relationship, so I'm gonna share my story. That doesn't don't don't have that goal in mind. Why, Lee? Why can't we have the goal in mind? Because that doesn't always work that way. Just because you share your story and tell people what you've been through does not guarantee that people are going to listen to you, right? It does not guarantee that people are going to like, like the new supply. It doesn't guarantee that they're going to care, right? It absolutely does not mean that they're going to care. It doesn't mean that they're going to listen to you or, you know, validate what you've been through. Some of them do like a lot of narcissistic people, a lot of new supplies do not care what you've been through. They got, the, they have this person now. That's all that matters to them, right? And all that matters to them is they, I, I got them now. You know, so if, if, if you're just sharing your story to try to ruin their new relationship with the new supply, don't put all your eggs in that basket. Because, again, not everybody leaves just because um, you tell your story, you tell what you've been through. Not everybody will leave. Some people will just be like, you know what? I'm going to stay anyway. And that might hurt your feelings. You might be mad as hell. So share your story to help you heal. Share your story to as a record of what you went through. Share your story with the intent right there. Like, like I said, because it doesn't always work in your favor if you come from a place of sharing your story just to try to get back at your ex, you know, to try to ruin a new relationship or whatever. Because I'm just telling you, not everybody leaves. 
not everybody cares what you went through. Let's be real. Sharing your story could help other people as well. You know, sharing your, like I have a y'all, if y'all don't know, I have a support group called the Mental Healers, right? Um, people share their stories every single day in there. People share their stories. Um, but it, like not everybody shares, but because that not everybody's there yet to want them to share. Not everybody's, you know, at a space where they just like, okay, I'm ready to share my story. Not everybody is there yet. But a lot of people share their stories in my support group um, in order to have a place to vent, in order to have a place for the things to go, in order to have a place for you feel like you can be heard and things like that. Share your story from a place of healing, a place of growth. Again, you, you like I said you have the right to remain silent. You can take your, you can take your story to the grave if you so choose. But just like I said, you also have the right to be loud. as You also have the right to be as loud as you want to. Like you said, like sometimes you, you know, the way TikTok works, <laughs> the way, this is why I say be safe because the way TikTok works, you share your story on TikTok, it might, it, it might go mega viral. Like the world might see it, the world might hear it. You know what I mean? So that type of stuff can happen. Like you share your story on TikTok. Now all of a sudden, you like, like people are looking at it like, um, all of a sudden, like the world sees it. You got millions upon millions of views and that narcissistic person right there. Um, <laughs> That narcissistic person right there uh, will absolutely like they might see it and they's like millions of views. Oh, my goodness. I'm embarrassed. I'm ashamed. You see, that's why I said like in these spaces, what you're doing right now, it's healing. See, it really is healing season for you. You know, it really is. That's why I just tell people like wherever you go from here, if you want to share your story and you don't want to share your story, you know, wherever you do with it, just it's just coming from a place of growth and healing and wanting to get better, wanting to feel better, wanting to be better. Because at the end of the day, that really is what matters. You know, at the end of the day, that really is what's important is being in this space right here. What really matters is doing what you're doing right now. That's what really matters. You know, getting better is what really matters. Feeling better, healing, growth, all of that stuff is what really matters. So what you have going on right now, it really matters to you. Be safe. Take care of yourself. Like, again, that's where this this word like this growth journey, like you don't have to be silent. You absolutely don't have to. Your silence could be, it could protect you, could keep you safe, of course. But <clears throat> your silence could also be hindering you. Because like a lot of times when you hold things in, it's like when you hold too much in, it's like you're poisoning yourself from the inside out, right? When you hold, when you're holding a lot of things in, you're poisoning yourself from the inside out. So it's just like, okay, I'm holding this in. I feel bad right now. But I, I, you know, I have to do this. I, you hold it in. It's kind of like you die from the inside out a lot. You know, it's like you're just let it out. You know, the more you hold it in, the more it hurts. The more, like I say, it kills you from the inside out. So let it out. Like I said, yeah, you don't have to do it on a public forum. You don't have to share it. Like I said, you can do a video diary if you want to, where the only person who sees the video is you. Again, sharing your story out loud doesn't mean the world has to see it. It just means that you're letting it out. It means that it has somewhere to go. It means it's not just sitting within you. That's what they, that's what it means right there. So that's what I'm just telling you right now in these spaces, this is what you have to do. You know, this is how you heal. This is how you grow um, and whatnot. So, you know, that's what I like. You don't have, you absolutely do not have to heal in silence. You can heal out loud. Anyways, y'all, let me have off this thing. Uh, actually, today's my son's birthday. They're up there asleep. I'm filming this early in the morning. So they're, they're like, Lee, go spend time with your son on his birthday. It's 7.04 a.m. He's still sleeping, y'all. He's about to get up. Um, anyways, y'all, I appreciate y'all tuning in. Make sure you subscribe. For my son's birthday, this, this is what you can get him for his birthday. Subscribe to his dad's YouTube channel. <laughs> anyways, y'all, I appreciate every single one of y'all. You don't have to heal in silence. Heal out loud if that helps you, helps you out in the long run. And as always, y'all, as always, Mental Hillness is out. Peace. Thank you so much for making it to the end of my video. I am extremely grateful for you have no idea. If you haven't already, make sure you go ahead and subscribe to the channel. Helps reach more people. And click on the screen to watch another video or to browse through another playlist. There's also a link on the screen to check out my courses and my support groups to help you heal and understand what you've been through. Thank you so much again. I will see you in the next video. Peace. Peace, peace, peace. Let's get it. Oh, didn't end? Oh my goodness, it's so embarrassing.